Hi everybody, it's Chris with City Girl Homestead. It's Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend and they're going to have a great start to a new week. Um, today we're starting our Depression Week and I'm just going to bring you along and show you one of the little prep things that I need to do for it. So I'm going to bring you down here and we're going to need a bunch of this. We're going to need some very, very thin sliced onions. Like real thin. If you have one of those, I don't know what they call it, but the thing that goes, I don't use that because I've gotten my knuckles a couple of times. But if you want to use something like that, you can. Um, but otherwise, just use your knives and then it really, really, you know, like paper thin. That's what you want to do. So that's what I'm going to get done first and then I'll show you what I'm going to prep next. All right, so the next step is we're going to take burger that I thought was completely thought out. That's not. <laughs> we're going to take about a third of a pound of burger. And what we need to do with this burger, I think that's probably a little more than a third of a pound too. I could probably weigh these. But what we want to do is round them and smash them as flat as we can get them. So I figured I'd do that before you start cooking them so that you have them already ready. Piece of the onion. So I want to flatten them out as flattened as you can get them. So I'm going to do this with this whole package of hamburger. And then, well at least the unfroze part of that. And then I'm going to show you what my next step is going to be. This actually, honestly, it's a depression meal, but it became so popular during the depression that actually it's a meal that you can probably buy anywhere. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm waiting on the hamburger to finish thawing out, is we're going to chop up some potatoes. Now, necessarily this might not have been a what they did with it. Um, some people put fried um, pickles with it, whatever. But the one thing that they had plenty of during the Depression was potatoes. So I'm going to do fried potatoes with it. So let me get all this stuff prepped up and let's see what we're going to put together. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got some bacon grease in the pan and I've got potatoes chopped up real small and I put in a couple of onions too. Make sure you season your potatoes very very well. You can add whatever you want but chances are in a restaurant back then it would have only been salt and pepper. And actually until I started doing I started doing the YouTube channel most of my spices were salt and pepper and my kids used to complain about that you're so plain mom <laughs> but that's how I was grown up you know as I was taught to use salt pepper maybe garlic powder onion powder whatever but not any of the other spices that I use so much now um, they truly were salt and pepper <laughs> so I'm gonna get the potatoes started and then I'll be back Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to toast our, our hamburger buns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to butter them and then put them down. And then I've got the oven heating up to 200. So once I get these done, because obviously I don't have as big a space as they have in a kitchen. <laughs> and I was lazy, lazy and didn't want to get my grill out. So, I will let these keep warm in the oven. So, normally what they would have done is once they toasted them, then they'd put the bun on top of it to warm it up. So, what we're going to do instead is we're going to keep it in the oven to keep it warm. So, let me get some of these done and then I'll be back. Alrighty, so actually I'm going to do a surprise for Jack today. We're just going to cook one. 
He's been taking care of Missy all weekend. And we're going to give him a happy Labor Day. We're going to give him a happy Labor Day. So, what we're going to do is start out by putting our burgers. He doesn't know it yet either, so I'll call him here in two minutes. <laughs> and we're going to put four burgers per pan, so I'm going to have to do three loaves. Because we have to have burgers for Tom for lunch tomorrow. Seems weird to put this small kind of a burger on there. Alright. And then once again, it would be salt and pepper. Now I should tell you what we're having. <laughs> Let me put the onions on and then I'll tell you. Alright. So now you're going to cover these burgers, try to put as much onion on there that you don't want it, you know what I mean, falling all over the side or anything like that. You want it staying right on the top of that burger. Like that one I did too much. And that one I didn't break the cart, I thought I had them all apart. Bad crust. <laughs> Alright, so let me bring you down here and show you what it looks like. There you go. So now what I'm going to do, this is called a depression burger. <clears throat> but if you go anywhere in the United States, it'll be called Oklahoma Fried Burgers. And it was a very, very popular um, dinner during the Depression because A, it was really cheap. And they could throw together a nice burger for pretty cheap. And the onions are basically like a filler. So I'm going to cook these and then I'll be back. I mean, you could watch it and like I'd really like to link in, lengthen my video, but do you really want to watch Burger Fry? <laughs> like watching pig dry. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a little bit of a discussion. And I do have a good fact about the depression today too. I'll be back. All right, so let's see how good I am at this part of it. <laughs> now you're gonna take your hamburger and you're gonna flip it over and try to get all of your onions underneath of it. And then squish it down. Are you surprised, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> He just brought over his plates. You know, I didn't get that all on top of the onions. I'm sure after a while people got really good at this. Tom's looking out his glasses at me. <laughs> you know what? Even if they don't flip right. You know something? It's okay. We'll get them put on the on the hamburger bun just fine. So now what you want to do is you want those onions to caramelize. So, and the hamburger to cook. So now you're going to put a lid over those and let them cook for a little bit so that they can um, caramelize and the, um, the hamburger can finish cooking. So I'll be back when that's done. All right. So now we've got those onions caramelized. Now we're going to put a slice of cheese. Now normally they would just use the American cheese that, you know, like the individually packed ones. But I don't have any of that, so Jack's the one that keeps all that. <laughs> so I'm going to put that over there and let it melt. So while I'm doing that, let's read my fun fact. And the reason I picked this fun fact was because it mentions Detroit, and you know, we're Michigan people. So, women's magazines and radio shows taught Depression-era homemakers how to stretch their food budget with casseroles and one-pot meals. Favorites included chili, macaroni and cheese, soups, and chip beef on toast. Macaroni and cheese craft became so popular during the Depression because it was easy and it was cheap. Potlucks, often organized by churches, became a popular way to share food and a cheap form of social entertainment. 
Many fa families strived for self-sufficiency by keeping small kitchen gardens with vegetables and herbs. Some towns and cities allowed for the conversion of vacant lots into community thrift gardens where residents could grow food. And actually, here in the city of Lansing, um, Jack owns one of those pieces of property now. They sell them for like a thousand bucks. But they will rent you where they tear down these old dilapidated houses. They will rent them to you for $25 a year for you to grow gardens. And they have like, you got one called what, Walnut Garden or something yeah. like that. And they build them all over the city and let people maintain them. Between 1931 and 32, Detroit's thrift garden program provided food for about 20,000 people. Experienced gardeners would be seen helping former office workers still dressed in white button-down shirts and slacks to cult cultivate their plots. That's why I had to. And actually, Detroit still has their community garden, and it still goes to feed people. Now, the, the food banks nowadays, they do have programs in which they have volunteers and stuff, and these people um, go in, and the food that is harvested is actually handed out to the food bank. So those, that's a service that, you know, it was a great thing back then, and it's even better now. And if you have a chance, that's like the reason we started our garden <laughs> was because of our governor. But besides that, you know, um, it's a good idea. It's a real good idea to have your own garden space. Even if it's in an apartment and you're growing it in your window. Do something for yourself. Because you never know when food's not going to be available. Oh, I know what else I forgot. I'm going to turn this off just for a minute. Um, I need some mustard, please. Mustard? Yep. The front one's getting kind of empty, so that one's the one that's kind of empty. You might want to grab a different one. Now, eventually I'd get much better at this <laughs> and not have to add like that. But I think the reason for them doing that was because those onions became a filler. That just adds a little extra flavor. And extra flavor, yes. <laughs> so now the reason they use mustard, I have no idea. <laughs> But it shows that you can put anything that you want on it. But their topping of choice was mustard. And, you know, I think probably why is because the mustard really probably tastes good with all the onions. It adds another little kind of tart flavor to it. All right, so let me grab these top parts here. You want to shut the other one? No. It's just keeping the buns warm, honey. I think you the dough. All right, well, just a minute. We're not quite ready for them. <laughs> well, I can some more. All right, so here's the first four. And I'm going to start the next ones, and then I'll be back. Tom got one piece of done potato. He goes, I think they're done. So he fed me. And I got a crunchy piece. <laughs> See how you are. All right, so once again, we're going to put the onions over top. I'll tell you what, if I was going to do this in bulk again, I know it doesn't follow along with tradition, but I'd fill the whole bottom of the pan with onions. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. It sounds like that's an awful lot of onion. But once it cooks down, really it's not that much onion. So there's my next four. We do have to make ten of these because we need two for his lunch tomorrow. So hopefully this video is not too broke up and horrible, but we'll be assembling them right on the plates today. So Jack, dinner's on me tonight. How's that? 
I appreciate it. <laughs> Give it a try. That's awesome. And you can try some, the pickle spear. It is my home canned pickles. Are them the the sun pickle? Yep. That's good too. Alrighty, so we're gonna get the table set up, and we'll me and Tom will give it a taste test. Can you say bye. bye. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi. It's Labor Day, and you didn't yeah. have to labor, except for here. No, I labor, labored at home. <laughs> Still have to clean the shower, huh? Yeah, I'll get that done. I'm so mean, I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so there's Tom's. He's got his pickle, his potatoes, and his onion bur depression burgers. An onion depression. Well, that's what it's called now, but it was called just depression burger. Actually, it's called Oklahoma Onion Burgers now. What do you think? I think it's really good. That's why it went past the Depression. People liked it so well that they actually adopted it and kept it, and they still cook it at restaurants all over the United States now. Mm -hmm. And try that pickle, huh? This one is some pickles. Yes, it is. Here comes the sun, here comes the sun, here comes the sun. <laughs> and we already know you know how the potatoes did since you kept taste testing them all along. <laughs> Tom loves his potatoes. So how was it for your first depression week of depression meal of the week? Mm, good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You'll like tomorrow's too, I promise. You guys have a blessed and wonderful day. Be a blessing. Bye, Tom. Enjoy your holiday, people, and bye, Tom. <laughs>